Two months on following the 9-11 attacks, New York City was hit with tragedy once again. An American Airlines Airbus crashed into a New York suburb just moments after takeoff from Kennedy Airport. Eyewitnesses in the moment say the plane simply plunged into the ground. The crash stuns an already grieving America with even more loss of life in its most famous city. New York City goes into full lockdown. Planes are grounded, bridges and tunnels are closed, and the Empire State Building and United Nations headquarters are evacuated. New York City residents are wanting answers as this quiet American suburb lays in flames. The cause of the crash? Not terrorism, but rather inadequate flight training on behalf of the airline. Going off of their flight training, the pilot ripped the tail fin clean from the plane, destabilizing it and plummeting the Airbus into the ground. Just how did the pilot apply so much stress on the plane? Could the airline have avoided this outcome? And what preventative measures have been put in place since? November 12th, 2001. It's been just over two months since 9-11, and New York's airports are crowded as security is very tight. All passengers are scrutinized and all bags are double-checked before loading. American Airlines operate a massive hub operation from John F. Kennedy Airport, New York's biggest of its main three airports. Throughout its life, American Airlines operated a total of 35 Airbus A300 series planes. The Airbus A300 was the first plane series manufactured by Airbus industry. The joint effort between European nations to produce a reliable aircraft in Europe saw the launch of the A300 in 1972. The plane was a massive hit in the medium range market. The wide body but twin engine design was the first of its kind, paving the way for the future of aviation as we know today, as nowadays, Twin engine long haul aircraft are the norm while four engine planes are largely being phased out. There were two major variants of the A300 produced for passenger service over its production life. The A300 B2 and B4 200 and the more modern A300 600R. This newer model was the version that American Airlines operated. The 600 variant brought the plane up to a more modern standard, computerizing the flight deck and eliminating the flight engineer from the flight crew. A shorter, stubbier version of the newer A300 was developed into the A310. The A300 truly was a product of its time. It was a blend between a modern airliner and a more classical jetliner. The plane is highly reliable and operated for decades with many of the world's best airlines until their gradual retirement throughout the late 2000s into the 2010s. Despite the modern upgrades, the Airbus A300 and even the Airbus A310 did not apply the same fly-by-wire technology found on the Airbus planes of today. These planes used a more traditional mechanical system when operating the control surfaces. However, Airbus did implement a recovery system whereby the plane can correct and stabilize its own flight path when needed entirely on its own. In 1994, when the crash of Aeroflot Flight 593 occurred, when the captain's child had unknowingly switched off the plane's autopilot whilst in the captain's seat, which later resulted in the crew losing control of their plane and ultimately crashing, it was highlighted in the investigation that had the crew had simply let go of the flight controls, the plane would have corrected itself and the crash would not have occurred. These kinds of recovery systems are common today, especially on Airbus planes, but this, even in 2001, was still new technology. At the time, detailed in American Airlines' flight training, it stated that in the event of wake turbulence, that is, the turbulence caused by an aircraft in its wake, excessive use of the rudder may be necessary. The tail fin on the Airbus A300 is held in place with six sets of attachment lugs made out of aluminum and composite materials. All of these connections are connected with a bolt made of titanium. The official documents by Airbus say that the setup of the tail fin can withstand 100,000 pounds of stress. After the crash of American Airlines Flight 587, the Allied Pilots Association, in a report that was submitted to the National Transportation Safety Board, noted that in 1997, another report by the National Research Council found multiple instances where pilots had applied enough pressure on the plane's rudder that the A300's vertical stabilizer, the tail fin, was pushed beyond its intended stress limits, concluding that there was, in fact, a design flaw in the A300's tail structure. 
With these findings, American Airlines had not updated their flight training to accommodate this. However, the APA also cited in their submission to the NTSB that Airbus should have communicated this information with American Airlines, but they didn't. On the morning of November 12, 2001, American Airlines Flight 587 and Airbus A300 was preparing to depart New York City for a flight to Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. For Dominicans, this flight is culturally important. It's a prime connection for many communities in New York with the old country. 260 passengers and crew are on board the plane. Flight 587 leaves the gate prior to 9am and taxis out for takeoff on runway 31 left. Coincidentally, a construction worker nearby to the airfield filmed the plane as it taxied out to the runway. Captain Edward States, aged 42, will be handling communications throughout the flight. Although he is the captain, First Officer Sten Molin, aged 34, would be the one at the controls. Their departing route out of Kennedy Airport would have Flight 587 make a left turn out over Jamaica Bay, where it will then pass over the small Bell Harbor suburb before flying southbound out of the Atlantic Ocean towards the Caribbean. On the ground, just in front of the Airbus plane, is a Japan Airlines Boeing 747 also preparing for departure on the same runway. Once that plane leaves the airport, a short amount of time is needed to pass to allow for the wake turbulence from the plane to subside enough to safely travel through for the next plane. American Airlines Flight 587 leaves the airport with takeoff at 9.14 a.m., leaving one and a half minutes between the Japan Airlines Boeing 747 and the American Airlines Airbus A300. The tower cautioned the plane when giving takeoff clearance about wake turbulence. Leaving runway 31 left, Flight 587 makes a turn to the left heading on its programmed route out of New York. Flying out over Jamaica Bay, their first assigned altitude on departure is 5,000 feet. Making contact with New York's departure control, the crew are instructed to climb to a higher altitude of 13,000 feet. At just over a minute after leaving the runway at JFK, Flight 587 encounters turbulence believed to be the remaining wake turbulence left over by the previous jet, as expected. The pilot flying, First Officer Sten Molin, begins applying adjustments to the rudder, alternating between left and right inputs to try and stabilize the plane. For a short while, he struggles to keep his plane level, quoting Captain States to his first officer, You alright? With continuing to struggle through the turbulence, First Officer Molin then in quick succession applies full left and full right rudder and at the same time he then applies more power to the engines, which is then quickly followed by two very loud thumps from within the plane. Without ever knowing it, First Officer Sten Molin has unknowingly applied just over 200,000 pounds of pressure on the tail fin of his A300, over double the maximum stated by Airbus. In this moment, the tail fin is ripped from the plane, leaving the aircraft uncontrollable. The tail fin itself was later salvaged from Jamaica Bay. Without any feasible way of controlling their plane, the pilots are left helpless as the plane enters a flat spin. On its journey towards the ground, enough force is exhorted on the wings that the engines are also torn away from their mounts. The loss of engines shuts off many of the plane's electronics, including the onboard flight data recorder. At just after 16 minutes past 9, the Airbus A300 crashes into the suburb of Bell Harbor below on the corner of Newport Avenue and Beach 131st Street. All 260 passengers and crew on board were killed in the crash. The crash itself demolished five homes, killing a further five people on the ground and seriously injuring another. The engines came down, one next to a gas station, and the other landing on another suburban home several blocks away. Two dogs were also killed in the crash, one of which was being transported in the cargo hold of Flight 587. Hundreds of people on the ground saw and watched the plane come down, many eyewitnesses reporting flames trailing from the plane as it crashed. The resulting crash site is seen all across New York City. The tragedy leaves the Bell Harbor suburb in flames. Airports are closed within minutes, planes are grounded, Transport across New York crawls to a standstill as the city that was left shocked by 9-11 finds itself again in a loss. The mayor of New York at the time, Rudolph Giuliani, is also on the ground visiting the crash site. 
The NTSB ruled out terrorism early on, as it was of prime concern with the accident being just two months after 9-11. The NTSB concluded with their investigation that the probable cause of the crash was the first officer's excessive and unnecessary use of the rudder pedals. However, the report suggests that this was not a case of pilot error, but rather improper training on behalf of American Airlines. Uncovering multiple examples where in the official pilot training from American Airlines, pilots are taught to excessively use the rudder in situations of turbulence. The NTSB also found that the American Airlines maneuvering program exaggerated the effects of wake turbulence, which some say led to pilots taking a more aggressive approach when dealing with this phenomenon. The A300's manufacturer, Airbus, argued that the crash was the fault of American Airlines, stating that they did not properly train their pilots on the details of the A300 tail fin. In the aftermath of the crash, American Airlines updated their pilot training program in the areas of rudder control and wake turbulence. Today, an American flag stands at the crash site of Flight 587, at the intersection of Newport Avenue and Beach 131st Street. The crash, which to this day remains as the second deadliest incident involving the A300 airplane. American Airlines operated the Airbus A300 up until 2009 when it retired the type. The A300 has largely left the role of passenger service along with its sister plane, the A310. They are now considered antiquated airplanes by today's standard. However, American Airlines still operate the New York to Santo Domingo route, which itself remains very popular to this day.